at five waves. Okay. Um, well, it's at four, but some people are debating if it's really four, but for sure three. And um, what's up, everyone? Preach on. I thank you so much, Marcus. Thank you. Let me, um, and Dr. Thunder, thank you for joining me. It's a pleasure whenever I see you or listen to you or when you play. Um, but I want to go over a couple of the ways in case you guys missed it at the beginning when I went over it. And the first wave um, was fairly simple. The goal was to recognize what women, that women were humans, not property. And this was just pretty much for white women to have the opportunity to vote. On the second wave, um, it kind of emerged the different types of feminism. You have mainstream slash liberal, radical, and cultural. Um, but the radical feminism wanted to reshape society entirely saying the system was inherently patriarchal and only an overhaul would bring liberation. So this is where we get the extremity, the extremities of feminism was in the second wave. And then the third wave we have, um, this is where we started the intersectionality, which is well, gender bias and racial bias is actually something that intercepts and we need to be fighting for both. So this is where black women were, I guess, kind of pushed towards more the forefront. This is the Anita Hill situation, which really put Black women in the forefront, too, with feminism, Alice Walker, different books, authors. This is within the third wave of feminism. And then the last is what we're in particularly now. And I think this has to do with the Me Too movement and also trans women rights. So that is the breakdown of feminism and where we are right now. So, Dr. Thunder, what do you have for us? Hey, how are you doing? Hey, you play with uh, Aretha. Yeah, I did. Uh, that's I also, huge. Yeah, and I also did a, um, you know, the uh, it's it was off Broadway, but the uh, it's called Beautiful, the Carol King mm -hmm. um, yeah. musical. Um, I did that musical. Uh, let's see here. It would have been a few years ago at this point. It was before the uh, the pandemic. But um, yeah, so that's that's one thing. Yeah. And uh, well, that's awesome. That's that's great. But good to see, good to see you. Uh, good to see Uncle Uncle Stu, Game Changer. Hello, Terry. Mm -hmm. um, Chelosiums. Yeah. So, so here's the, here here's here's an issue that I have. Uh, see, the feminist thing. It, I don't have an issue with empowering women. Um, I have no issue with that. What I have an issue with is this idea of female supremacy. Mm -hmm. That's actually what we're dealing with here, and from its infancy. Feminism has been uh, a proxy of white supremacy. Um, and if you look at the way that uh, characterizing black men basically as super predators, if you look at how the those that were battling for the right to vote for the right to vote, how they use that narrative as a way to uh, gain to gain the right to vote. Mm -hmm. And then if you listen to um, the, the, I mean, blatantly racist stuff that they said regularly, not even censoring it, uh, in particular about black men. And then when you see how that whole white feminist thing was completely embraced by black women, and then the logical outgrowth of all of that is the a lot of the rhetoric that you hear from the di divestors this you know selective breeding and all this kind of stuff which has an eerie uh resemblance to stuff that you'd hear margaret sanger say right so see that's my that is my issue so empowering yes and i've never had an issue with facilitating, supporting uh, women that I thought were serious, um, you know, about 
their craft. I've never had an issue with that and have been very much involved in supporting and, um, you know, and helping women. But I don't like this idea that of, uh, uh, especially in our community, this sort of artificial propping up of our women at the mm-hmm. expense of the men. And I'm an academic, and uh, <laughs> I think academia has done as much or more than anyone has or any institution has done to actually damage the black community because of the disproportionate promotion of our women at the expense of the men. Someone said something earlier about, uh, you know, you're not going to give up power. Once you've achieved a certain amount of power, you're not going to give it up. So there are 20,000 fewer, and this is an old number. It's more like 30,000 fewer Mm -hmm. uh, black men in the academy than black females. 30,000 fewer. I'm talking about professors. All right. And in order for that to change, those that have gained power with the the black women would have to say, you know what? This is out of balance. This is not good for our sons. This is not good for future generations. We need to have more, more parity in our community, you know? Um, And they would have to say, you know what? All of these next hires, we're going to prioritize black men. That's never, ever, ever, ever going to happen. And frankly, any group that has achieved a certain amount of power, I would, I I mean, you kind of can't blame them for trying to hold on to that. Mm -hmm. Um, So we're in a kind of a, a funky a funky sort of situation. I don't really see, I don't see any change. I, I see this as getting worse. And um, I have a nine-year-old son. Mm-hmm. And I'm very, very concerned about his, uh, you know, the, his dating prospects, you know, um, just with, I mean, first of all, he's got a target on his back already. Mm-hmm. Right. So, I'm concerned about that. I'm concerned about dating prospects. I'm concerned about, you know, schooling, everything else. I've got him in a private school. He's in a private Catholic school. He's never going to public school. Um, but yeah, it's a fun, <laughs> it's a funky situation. Yeah. You know, it's funny and game changer. I know you wanted to say something, but I think it's interesting because now that in, we're in the fourth wave of making sure that we have trans rights, particularly trans mm-hmm. women. And feminism started as we want women to have an equal playing field as men, but it's making a full circle because now in women, it's biological men fighting back for a role and taking over what biological women wanted. So it's a full circle as far as with biology where we wanted equal rights, but now being inclusive of trans women, it's also being inclusive of biological men taking advantage of what feminism was supposed to be. So again, it's still people trying to run from the patriarchy, but it's like we're yeah, yeah, the only- now in it. And so it do you see the dichotomy of it is just interesting to me. Yeah, the the the, the only feminists that seem to make sense to me are what have been characterized as turf trans exclusionary radical feminists Mm -hmm. the sort of name calling this is what the left does they they come up with an acronym so that they don't have to actually address your arguments but um those are the only i mean for the most part those are the ones that i actually agree with a great deal of what they say especially when they're talking about you know i thought that feminism was about empowering women about you know Mm -hmm. um giving women opportunities, not about smuggling in, you know, a dude in a skirt. Mm -hmm. Um, And that just doesn't seem to, that just doesn't seem to, um, it doesn't seem to work. And 
I'd also argument I'd also argue that there's actually only really been one wave of feminism. I know we we tend to segment them up and we talk about the focuses of different time periods, but there's the pretty much the same thread from the very beginning. And you listen to the way that the early feminists talked about, you know, not needing men for anything and how how uh, they believed that they were superior and everything else. It's that same thread of thought that sort of travels through all four of these supposed waves of feminism. Mm -hmm. And the only thing I want to add. Hold on, on. on. let me, I'm going to get game changer in you, but let me read this. Um, from Dane C. Thank you so much. It's the women's suffrage movement was not an abolitionist movement. They didn't care if slavery ended. They were mad. Black men got the right to vote before white women. Okay. Okay. So um, I do want to say this. Um, I would challenge the notion that power isn't given up. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's it definitely has been. And I think that that is the problem. I mean, you know, there weren't any bombs, bricks or bullets, um, you know, when women got the right to vote. Um, the men just of the time just gave it up. Like, oh, OK, here you, you want the right to vote. Here you go. Power, you know. And um, as far as feminism goes, they continue to do so in each and every single wave. And they likely are doing so in this current wave. So, I mean, you know, whether you call it waves or not, the, the current request of the group, you know, has been met without opposition. And I think that that is really why it's empowered and emboldened, because what they're doing is they are um, attacking until resistance is met. You see, I talked about the abolitionist group earlier. You know, and yeah, there was that feeling, but guess what? It it disbanded, it ended. You know, they didn't continue to push for you know um, slave rights or black rights and anything like that for another hundred years. And the reason for that is because look at what it cost. Look at what freedom cost the first time. You know, you had mm -hmm. to take free black men to volunteer after being freed to fight in a god awful war, getting you know getting bayoneted and you know. Um, in, in a hole in Georgia somewhere, dying mm -hmm. that way. Like nobody wants to do that again. When you fight for something, you know, it exhausts the movement like that. Uh, same with the civil rights. It's like, you know, do you really want the German shepherd again? You know, these things disband when it's hard fought. Nothing in feminism was ever hard fought. So they really, you know, it's a lot of steam. It's like, oh, that was easy. You know, it's like if you if you like, OK, I'm going to I'm going to make the mayor get rid of the potholes in my neighborhood. And then you go and you got all this fire in you. And then, you know, you said, OK, I'll get rid of them. It's like, oh, well, well, now I want you to put some stop signs and speed bumps. Up. You know, you're you're going to do that. But if the mayor says, oh, no, you're going to have to fight for this. You're going to have to, you know, then it's like, OK, I'm just happy with the potholes. It's that thinking mm -hmm. they it, it's it's not fighting. It's power given up, um, Terry and Dr. Thunder, that. Um, is, is power given up. So they're, of course, going to ask for more because they got the first ones so easily. And I, yeah, I'm, I'm going to agree with you on that game changer because I'm also going to say, you know, and that's probably me, I'm a staunch capitalist. So I believe money is power and wherever the money is, is the power. So if, if there's a certain level of economics that's not being supported, then things got to change, you know, and that's, and that's in politics as well as in business. So I argue that if, if, if black men built themselves up from a capitalistic standpoint and built businesses and built infrastructure, which we're doing slowly, but if we build those things up, what's going on in academia is, is irrelevant because that woman can sit up there. And if she know that her man is out there, making real money and got some real structure, he can give her the real life that she's been really wanting. You know, my, my job in, in my home um, is real simple. I go out here and I produce the money so that my woman can be as feminine as she want to be. If she decides tomorrow to quit, she can quit. If she decides she want to work part-time, she can work part-time. I built myself up to do that because I got tired even, even in my last marriage, but just in general, I wanted to be like my daddy. My daddy was the type of man that hit, my mother worked all her life, but he had the mentality and the attitude that when my mother got tired of, and he from the South, got tired of fooling with these uh, people. I'm going to say it nicely. 
my mother can quit and live a life of just being a housewife. I think when we as men understand to build ourselves up economically and begin to build ourselves up to the point where we can be the economic foresight and the economic structure, we can alleviate a lot of these issues. Now, nope. you know, does hey, that me, eliminate? Nope. Let me get in, please. please oh, please, no, please. right. If, if I may. And here's why I say no. Okay. Al Bundy did exactly what you described. And look at Peggy. We can't work <laughs> under the assumption <laughs> that. You got uh, Gage, you going back no, 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 no. Never it's, said Al no, but it's a reflection of society. <laughs> no, it's a reflection of society, though. I mean, right. what I'm saying is uh, we're we're working under the the concept that if we behave like traditional men, that the women will all of a sudden become traditional women. And, you know, um, part of what the, the show was portraying was, listen, you could behave like a traditional man all you want to. That doesn't guarantee that they will behave as traditional women. And, you know, um, history, especially with feminism and things like that, have shown us otherwise. It, it's actually proven that, you know, it's, it's like, listen, you could you could do that, but that doesn't mean that they're going to act that way. So I do want to, you know, squash the notion that, you know, if you build it, they will come or if you do what they did in the past, then they will behave as they did in the past. That's, I I don't yeah. think that that's necessarily true. TJ, I want to get you in because I know you had something, but then I want to ask the gentleman a, a couple questions. So TJ, go ahead. And then I want to ask you guys a question. Well, mm -hmm. I was going to say that I don't, I don't think that um, I was going to basically disagree with game. Turn. I don't, I don't think it's going to be yielded um, because it, it goes back to what, Dr. Thunder said, in my opinion, it has gone from us seeking equality to us be seeking superiority. And I think whether we intended for it to end up that way or not, that's where we are. Mm -hmm. And that's where we are as women. And because I think that, and like I said before, you know, initially it was about go to college and do this, but then somehow in getting those things, we began to think that we were better than our men and, and see, and it's has gotten even worse. So I don't think because I think because it's gotten worse, I don't foresee that we are going to, what I, I'm speaking in generalities that women are going to say, well, yeah, you know, we, we got it wrong. Let us, you know, let's redo this thing. Let us yield our position of power because essentially that's what it amounts to yield our position of power to whom they believe is oppressing us which again i said they believe mm -hmm. so I, I i don't really see that well i don't I, I wasn't saying that um that i believe that women are going to yield their power um i was saying that um because you're making the assertion that power is never yielded and i was saying that men has yielded power to win women that's what i was saying I um, feel that men are better people in the sense that they do stuff like that. And when they have power, they work in the best interest of um, men, women, and children. When women have power, they seem to work in the best interest of women. So um, no, I don't anticipate the feminists to yield power in that way. But also um, I think that there will come a point very soon that they realize that they don't have any power. Um, simply mm -hmm. put, the only power that they have is gifted to them by men. Um, and once they take the power away from men, then they actually have nobody to gift it to them. So um, I think that once they they reach a level of intelligence to where they come to that conclusion, then it will dissipate, but only then. And it will not be pretty, the process. Yeah. Let me ask you a question uh, again. Hold on, I, hold on, Uncle Stu, because I want to okay. ask you all three, um, the fellas, a question. Okay. So with the different waves or the wave of feminism, has it directly affected you guys? Yes. And if so, how? Um, me too. The Me Too movement has directly too, affected definitely. you. Okay. Well, you don't uh, have to go into that. I'm okay. just asking, has it directly? So yeah, it the has. fourth wave is the Me Too. Okay. No, um, no. I, I get confused. Okay. But yeah, no, is it but sure. just feminism in general, but you have because of the Me Too movement. The Me Too uh -huh. movement and I've been touched with that transgender thing with my grandson cuz we had to go into the hospital and tell him we putting a sex on his birth certificate. Oh. Oh yeah, yeah. That's a yeah, thing. that's why I'm yeah, they they were trying to argue, they were trying to argue about hey, you don't have to put a gender on the birth certificate and we like uh no. He has all of the parts. He is this. So yeah, I've, I've, yeah. Okay, thank you. And Dr. Anyway. Thunder, what is yours? Not 
Um, Celine, thank you so much. Women are supposed to be virgins, tra trans, not men. Oh, all right now. Okay, so <laughs> Celine, <laughs> Dr. Thunder has- uh, I, think she was saying, I, I think she said uh, trad, like traditional. Traditional. Yeah, traditional. Oh, okay, I thought I was talking about you. I was like, well. Yeah, no, she was saying um, virgin <laughs> slash traditional. Not right. Got it. Yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you, Game Changer. Um, Dr. Thunder, has feminism directly affected you? Oh, most assuredly. Uh, you know, uh, I'm an academic, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as I was saying before, and there is a, a, directly because of feminism, the education system is the way that it is. So if you track the education system, so in its infancy, it also it always sort of biased towards the girls. But uh, momentarily, they said, okay, and this is when we're talking about white boys. They were like, hey, we need to do something to try to uh, create some more parity between the performance of the of the white girls and the white boys. Mm -hmm. And so they made some changes and it had the expected result, better results for the boys. Um, but then they reverted back to the previous sort of uh, ideology, which prioritizes a lot of sitting in the seat, a lot of looking at a book, you know, that kind of stuff when kids are young and you know that boys don't want to do that. Um, and that's not, uh, it's not a reflection of a lack of intelligence or capability. Uh, it is just that men and women are different. And I know that's a controversial statement now to even say that men and women are different. Um, so that's an interesting thing. If you look at the high school uh, valedictorians and class presidents. And this has been the case for a long time. And this is not just a black community thing. It's a, an American, uh, American society thing. 93% of the college, I'm sorry, of the high school class presidents and valedictorians are female. Mm -hmm. 93%. Now, mm -hmm. unless what you're saying is that we think that the boys are just um, chop liver and they just ain't worth nothing. And that's why uh, the girls are just outpacing them and they're just better than they are. Unless that's what we're saying, mm -hmm. uh, which a, a lot of feminists actually think that's true, <laughs> by the way, uh, unless that's what we're saying, then we need to look at the system and say, what is it about the way that we do education that's creating these disparities? And then now you see in college, you're seeing that it's a 60-40, 60% females attending, 40% males. Mm -hmm. And that statistic is far worse in the black community. I actually did a, I did one of my Car Thunder episodes on, on this topic uh, recently. It might've been within the last couple of weeks. Uh, where I detailed uh, in colleges the percentages of men and women, and I did it on the white side, and then I also did it on the black side. And uh, it is, uh, it's a, I mean, it's appalling that we just look at this and treat it like it's, it's okay. This mm -hmm. is standard fare, no big deal, nothing to talk about here. That stat that I said, the 93% stat I said before, that's been the case for at least 30 years. But nobody, nobody says anything about that. We act like it's, it's okay. Um, and, uh, and I basically agree with what Uncle Stu was saying, but I would say that I think what happens in the academy does matter. The reason that it matters is because the academy is involved in about 10 years ahead of time social reengineering. So all of these sort of crazy social reengineering woke stuff, all of that stuff starts in colleges and in universities. So the stuff that we're seeing today, all of the crazy stuff that we see in society today that they're doing, that stuff has been around for about 10 years in the academy. So they're actually pushing this stuff out of these universities. 
And so that's why uh, you have to get control of that. You have to fix that problem. Um, but yeah, so that would be a pretty direct way. And, and I'll tell you the only reason that, that, cause I'm a, I'm a, I'm a unicorn, <laughs> right? Um, I'm a unicorn. Uh, so the only reason that I got the job that I got is because my predecessor had particular, had a particular priority structure in mind, right? He was also a black, a black male. So he had a particular thing. He saw certain issues. Now, obviously, I needed to be able to do the job. But if the, those of us that are in the academy aren't aware of the stuff that's going on and don't actually prioritize, then the this uh, what was twenty thousand, which is now thirty thousand, is going to be forty, fifty thousand fewer, you know, black men in the academy than black females. And uh, the university system is uh, is incentivized because of Title IX uh, to uh, to count women as a minority. So black women are counted twice. A double so minority, yeah. As a double minority, and so that what that does is it ends up marginalizing um, the black men. And yeah. then when you and then what sucks is that when you prioritize and even have the audacity to celebrate the excellence of black men, the same folks will look at you and treat you as uh, treat that as if that is somehow racist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> now that's some good points. Yeah. I'm not trying to do a pushback. I want to do a question. Um, Dr. Dunda, Tell me, am I right or wrong, or or is there data on this? My understanding, and I, I'm going more on the HBCUs. Um, historically, black men has never really been college oriented, even going through the Reconstruction era. And I don't think black men started really digging into high levels of education until like the mid '90s, when the whole Bill Cosby thing showed up. Is, is am I right or wrong in that era? Because I mean, we can, we was basically able to work blue collar jobs and make way more than certain industries. Yeah. And I'm, yeah. Gonna, I'm, just, I'm not justifying it. I'm just saying, you know, the numbers wise. Hold on. Dr. Dunner, go ahead and respond, please. And then, Game Changer, I wanted your um, response to off the question. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, this is a good point. Uh, it is the case that, uh, Black men never have been as interested in education, higher education as black females. That's true. But we saw a skyrocketing of the of the difference uh, probably started in the 80s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. You start to see a skyrocketing of way more of our women going to school because they were getting grants in um all kinds of govern, government incentives that were not available to black men. That was part of it. And I always tell, I always tell folks, um, you know, college is expensive. So mm -hmm. if you go to college, you want to know why you're going to college. Right. I counsel a lot of students regularly that went to college and they, and they have what's called a, an exploring degree. Exploring means they don't know what they're doing and they just spend in their parents' money. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. They haven't right. worked it out yet. It's too expensive for that. I tell folks that it would be better not to go to college and get a job than to just go to college and don't know what you're doing. I agree. But now there's a tremendous pressure that's placed on kids uh, to go to college because it's basically an extension of high school. Right. And a lot of the uh, academic rigor has been reduced and students actually have oh. the ability to get professors uh, removed from certain courses and all kinds of stuff based yeah. on electronic evaluation, hmm. um, uh, which is which is anonymous. Yeah. So right. there's all kinds of there's kind of all kinds of issues. I hate to interrupt, but yeah. I hate to interrupt. But I have a um I have a meeting in like yeah. five. Yeah, go ahead, so. game changer. Yeah. Okay. Um. Thank you. So to answer your question, um. Yeah. Um. Real quick. Um. 
yeah, I lost a job because of that, um, because mm. of a comment that I said that I thought was benign. However, mm -hmm. um, you know, they didn't uh, didn't apologize for it. It was one of those things. So that happened. Um, and a um, and yeah, I received an F on a um, paper um, for something. And um, I was just um, in humanities in college. Um, I was deemed by the teacher who was obviously a feminist as a, um, a sexist because um, she would ask questions that I felt were stupid. Um, you know, she I was made to look at artwork and says, how does it express feminine principles? And I looked and to me, I'm not, you know, an art connoisseur. And it was just like a bunch of paint splattered everywhere. And I said it had a lot of pink in it. And she said that that was sexist. I was like, I don't see feminist <laughs> principles in this. I see a bunch of, I see like some white splashes here. It, it was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So she didn't like me. And um, on a paper that I had to do about the Shakespeare book Othello, um, she asked a question. And for those of you who've read Othello, mm -hmm. um, to me, it's more about um, tribalism at the time, racism, blind racism, um, mm -hmm. you know, men, competitive nature, things like that, um, then it had anything to do with the, with women. And she said, how did the men portray that, betray their wives? How did Othello and Iago betray their wives? I was like, what? Because betrayal requires initial trust and there wasn't an initial trust there. So I explained that and I, what I felt was a very poignant paper, and I got an F on, on that. It was, oh. it was ridiculous, yeah. So, yeah. Those okay. Are okay. Hey, let, yeah. let me ask you a quick Thanks question, David, before you go. Uh, and if you can. I, I, I'm sorry, Dr. Oh, you got it? Uncle, so I got okay. it. Okay. All right. Thank you, Game Changer, so much. It's um, always Thank a you. pleasure. All right. Bye. Bye. All right. And then, you guys, I'm going to. Well, I got us on a close up. Back <laughs> <laughs> that up a little bit, please. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like to be close to the esteemed Dr. Thunder now, you know. Right, I, me too. <laughs> to and I, that um, girl, yeah. <laughs> but before I go, I'm gonna get um ask you guys the last question and your final thoughts on where we are now with the feminist movement. Do I think it's going anywhere? Absolutely not. Um, do I think it's needed? Absolutely not. So we know it's not going anywhere. Do I think it's needed? No, you guys maybe think something else, which I can probably assume what you're going to say. If it is needed still, why? If it is not, then what does feminism, the movement have or need to do to try to um, make more sense and for it to be balanced for equality, if that makes sense to you guys. And I can explain a little bit more, but go ahead, Dr. Thunder, I'll get yours, um, your response to that. So again, do you think we need feminism now? If so, yes. If not, then what can we do as a community or what could you do as men to make sure that equality is actually equal and that no one is trying to overtop anyone and equality is not necessarily has anything to do with equity. Yeah, of course. I mean, I, I, I think that, uh, I mean, there is no, there's no right, uh, that men have that women do not have. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, when you take a look at, this whole supposed uh, gender pay gap, we know that it's not based on, uh, you know, it's not based on the, the it's, it's apples and oranges, largely. So um, women uh, usually will take more breaks, you know, they'll have kids. Right. Uh, and then they need to be off for four or five years and then they come back into the job market. And in that time, the men have been working consistently over that period of time. Um, and so you, you, you can't penalize the men because the women have kids because some of the pro proposed solutions for this thing is to basically um, stagnate the, the pay of the men that have been working 
the whole time. The other thing is that on the balance of averages, uh, men and women uh, are different with respect to being agreeable. Women tend to be more agreeable. Uh, men mm -hmm. tend to go in there and ask for raises frequently. Right. Right. And then men are also usually willing to pick everything up and move. And women are not usually as willing to do that. So there's there's actual reasons. Uh, men tend to be interested in things. And women tend to be interested in, in careers that's, that are surrounding people. And the people kind of jobs, for, for the most part, don't pay as much. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so I don't think that we really need, uh, we, we, we need that, you know, as it were, uh, now how do I see, so basically feminism has basically thrown the pendulum way on one side mm -hmm. and what's happening now is there's a lot of trying to balance. And this is why places like the manosphere, the black manosphere, red pill spaces, why a lot of these conversations are being had uh, is in an attempt to try to push the, the pendulum um, closer to the middle. Now, what, do I think that that's going to be totally successful? No, I don't. Mm -hmm. And I think that the, the thing that has most facilitated a lot of the delusion that is, uh, that is normal, that is common, is the fact that Men have, men have uh, created the, uh, the world, the infrastructures, all the stuff that supports, uh, you know, comfort, um, you know, that supports safety, you know, stuff like electric, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like, you know, heat in their house, all of that. Men have developed the infrastructure so well and have subdued the earth to the extent that it is actually possible for people to believe that they could, that they could do it by themselves without the existing infrastructure. And the fact is, is that is totally delusional. And if, and when we ever get to the place where stuff resets because of, you know, mm -hmm. you know, WW3, or because of a number of other things that can happen, I think you'll see almost immediately most of the uh, of these delusions disappear instantaneously. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I totally agree. And um, I think that's what we I was talking about earlier. And then I brought up the clip of like Jordan Peterson. It's, you know, you want e equality, but you really don't because being an equal playing field means look at the jobs that you don't want to touch that men hold 90, 99% of you want it. You want that to be equal to. And then. Oh yeah. Like, yeah. So you, you never see any clamoring for parody in lumberjacks. Yeah. No. Um, uh, skyscraper window cleaners. Right. Right. No, absolutely. Um, absolutely, absolutely, <laughs> that's, absolutely not. So Yeah. I, I hear you. Post hole diggers. <laughs> hmm. yeah, no, nobody wants parity in those jobs. Bricklayers, you don't want right. to do that. You don't want to do that. Yeah, yeah. So, Courtney, I mean, you can do a short hey, been, and show everybody that you can take a whole engine out of a car, can't you? Uh, <laughs> hey, okay. hey, Courtney, I, I, if, I could, if I can say, uh, I, I've been actually trying to get in touch with you because I'd love to collaborate with you, bring you on my platform to interview you on my conversations with Dr. Thunder series. If you'd be interested in that. Yeah, of course I will. Okay. That's great. I, I don't know how to get in touch with you. Uh, exactly. Uh, maybe you could put your email in the back or something. I got you. I'll that's great. That yeah. Dr. Thunder, she's going to represent the HBCU. <laughs> that's, a, look, that's a whole nother conversation that I plan on having. It's funny because before I got on here, I was on the phone with Quest. Uh, if y'all familiar with him, he used to be on the peep all the time. And we were talking about, well, what do you think about this HBCU stuff? And I know you're a stark HBCU pro proponent, but y'all out here looking crazy. And, and I have, 
I haven't. Yeah, because you disappeared during Deion Sanders. I I'll wait for that too. Now <laughs> I Just haven't. Saying. I haven't. Oh, I need a moment on that. But Doctor Zutter, <laughs> I am sending you my information in the back chat. It's super easy. But um, go ahead. Did you have my question? I know I. Yeah, asked I got the question. Okay. What um, what, what do you think? I, I think a feminism needs to be over this whole argument. And as far as who, I really think this is a woman's argument now, especially with this new alphabet community. I think that's women that really needs to deal with it. And I do see it being sprinkled. The video you showed, I've seen it on um, two other big YouTuber, female YouTuber channels. So Mm -hmm. I think that's a conversation that really needs to be had amongst women. I think we as men, we got our own situation that we need to be dealing with. Um, so I, I agree. We do need to have a conversation, but I think that needs to be more of a female mm -hmm. conversation. And, and, and we as men, we need to do, you know, we need to do stuff on our own side because that's not really our, we only argue when it truly affects us. Me too has been a huge effect on 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 men as a whole um but yeah I, I really think that's a that's a that's really a woman's issue and you know because i put it like this if you didn't raise daughters you have sons mm -hmm. you're, you're in that fight because your son could be the very next person that will be affected by it yeah you know you know i i agree with you i think this is a a woman's issue from what feminism is now turning in the, what it's turning to be. Mm -hmm. And um, I am seeing where before with feminism, where it was eliminating a lot of men out of the equation. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy because now it is turning out to eliminate women. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's, you know, and the rights that it's, per, it's champion now it ain't, it's not women. I, I know it's badly it's affecting women. When I got my daughters calling me talking about that, speak on this subject. It's like, I'm a man. I can't speak on this. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because there's certain topics that I feel, whether it's YouTube related or just me being a male, I can't speak on. If I tried to say the things you said, I'll be called every name, mm -hmm. everything up under the book. Um, so I couldn't speak on it, but I was able to speak on, you know, like the Aretha Franklin thing, because again, when my oldest daughter's blowing up my phone talking about, you know, and we having two hour conversations, yeah. she's, the, she's only 37. Mm -hmm. So at 37, she's having this real anger and frustration with that. Yeah. I, I know now it's really affecting, you know, women. And then um, I was on another female's channel and it was having the same conversation. And it was like, here she is, the heterosexual. She brought a lesbian on. And even a lesbian was mad about what was going on. So it was like, no, nah, this is strictly, you know, a woman's a woman's issue, definitely. Yeah, and I think more women need to speak about it. But again, it, now it's now women are being offended by trying to protect womanhood because it's being, ah. Yeah. You know, well, all exactly. this stuff, and, you know, I'm, I'm old school with it. So mm -hmm. I still hold my old school thoughts and ideas. And I know we're in a new age and trying to also be respectful. But then it's my I'm trying to be respectful. But if I'm offended because you're disrespecting me as far as what I believe and who I am, then that's a problem. So it's the appropriation of womanhood that I don't appreciate that offends me. But this is a woman issue and women gonna have to say something about it. Yeah. Well, I look at it like this. I, I like to say, you know, coming from a military background, you have five branches of the, of the military. Mm -hmm. So in this situation, you're going to have to have five different ways to, to attack this entire situation. So like, for an example, you know, Dr. Thunder's going to have to attack it on academia. I'm going to have to attack it from the capitalists, you know, um, that's why I was getting ready as game changer, you know, so game chamber may have to attack it in his direction, you know, so we all got to come from various directions to attack the situation mm -hmm. so that we can come out on the other side because we didn't get attacked one direction. We got attacked in multiples 
of direction. So each one is going to have to pick a lane and, and fight in that lane. Yeah, I agree. You know? All right. Well, you guys, I'm going to drop you. I'm going to go ahead and close up. It has right. been a phenomenal Thank conversation. You. It always turns out to Thank be you. something that just brings my little spirit to joy. So <laughs> I thank you. <laughs> I thank hey, you guys so much. Um, honored it, I just want, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, I just wanted to say real quick. Thanks for uh, uh, you know allowing me to contribute. Yeah. Uh, I I commend what it is that you're doing, mm -hmm. and uh, I really appreciate it. Um, it's uh, it's not often it's not often that uh, women are speaking up on behalf of men um, and sometimes folks question what the motives are mm -hmm. um, uh, you are one that i don't have any question of what the motives are and so i i appreciate what you're what you're doing and please be encouraged thank you so much that meant a lot thank you yeah, keep up the good work. And me and Dr. Thunder, we waiting on we waiting on you to get that motor up out that car, you know. <laughs> I'm gonna Google it when I get out. Yeah, you, you get that motor out and then have your brother just standing to the side looking at you. <laughs> Thank you guys All right. so much. It's been a joy. Talking to you and Uncle Stu, I'll, I'm gonna go visit you at your page. I'll see you. Uh trust me, uh the next live may be real controversial. You may need to help me. Right, hit me up. Let me I'm, know. I'm, I'm gonna be honest. My okay. 